Hallucination exists temporarily and history takes place. People are carried away to different directions through the mind as events. Events dissolve across the passage of years into images. Stories are told, songs are sung, hearts become rooms set aside, and memory begins. Looking back, he was crooked as they come, crooked as a true story, a bleeder, no smile too smirky, no risk too blue. He stood right out and was stone flush. Tired friends from high school sighed, what a guy. Women leaped into stores with his money. Several leading concerns were left solidly behind. He moved like smoke through the arts. Yeah, in retrospect, few even knew he bled at all. His mother had pet birds. She named each one after a memorable good luck year, except one which was named after a famous hero. 1943, 1945, 1956, 1959, Kennedy, 1963, 66, 70, 1973, etc. All good luck has death in it. He had this suitcase full of money from some shady deal or another. And when this new secretary of his saw it, she fell madly in love with him. She was a big German girl, blonde and full of zest, who had lots of pets, little birds and dogs and stuff. Anyway, he was on the rebound from this kind of failed cattle queen who was also a kleptomaniac. So it sure didn't take this German girl long because just a few weeks later, they ran off to Mexico to get married. After that, they moved down to Austin where he was working on some more of his suitcase deals set up house in this teeny, small little condo near the Capitol building where some ex-senator crony of his kept his whore, and they settled in with a real honeymooner's vengeance, making love and taking lots of pain pills. After a couple of weeks, though, her pets were driving him nuts. I think the birds reminded him of his mother, and his resistance was worn pretty thin from all the drugs. You know, also, she was way too big for him. Not fat, but really large, you know. And in the night, she'd roll over on him and mutter and jab him with her elbows and knees. She just wasn't used to sleeping with anybody sick. But it caused him a lot of distress, you know, and finally, a major hemorrhage. She had to rush him to the hospital for transfusions and monitoring, but the, she hated hospitals because her mother had been a nurse in New York or something anyway. While he was recuperating, she just packed up all the pets and left. No, 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 nothing. I think she's over in Hawaii now, or Aspen or somewhere. But the marriage hardly lasted six weeks. Just long enough for that suitcase to get empty and for him to turn 30 in the emergency ward. Yeah. And as soon as he got better, he moved all of his stuff back up here to the Cap Rock. Knowing he'd really screwed up but really determined now, you know, to try to get back with his first wife, one of the only women he said he ever really loved. I was surprised to see him back in town too, and when I ran into him the night of the day he got back, I asked him what had happened. But he didn't really have much to say, just something about too much bird shit, and that he'd been betrayed by desire. I got all the details from his mother. He's sure in my heart tonight. He told me once that if you got a big fruit jar the night you got married and put one jelly bean in it each time you made love the first year, you'd need a whole lot more than just one jar. Then he said, try the same thing 10 years later and you wouldn't even need any jelly beans. I remember the third grade. 
It was the only time that he really had to be in a wheelchair, but he's real cute, and all the girls would make over him every minute, even fight each other at recess over who got to push him around the school ground while he'd comb out his hair, duck tails, and a flat top with fenders. It was right at the start of rock and roll. The other boys stayed away from him, though. They avoided him. He, he was smarter than most of them, plus that disease. You know, it was so strange and weird for kids to deal with. But more than that, more than anything, he could really be mean. Mean as holy shit. And nobody could do anything about it. Not the principal, the teachers, his folks, his mother. No. And if you touched him, you could literally quite kill him. His blood was that edgy. Obviously, this played no small role toward him developing some very necessary, very basic social skills for later on. He became a real wizard at manipulation. <laughs> Remember, he despised Dracula movies. Hated anything that had to do with vampires. I guess this made sense, though, considering that he lived most of his life on other people's blood. He told me at a party once when he was really drunk that the whole idea of oral sex repulsed him. He had a lot of trouble with his teeth. He missed school a lot. He was absent all the time. His body just couldn't hold up to the weight of his blood. He was either in the hospital or having to stay home and just not move, freeze for weeks at a time, because if his blood ever did break loose, which it could do in a whisper, it'd fly out of him like a dam burst and go running wild all through him in torrents. I guess the worst was when he banged his elbows or his knees. The blood would rupture, just suddenly go roaring in, flooding and blocking up so bad and swell so bad that the pressure actually separated the bones in his joints. Years later when he was drinking, it ran right out of his liver and filled up his stomach. He was always in awful pain. <laughs>